Donnie McGowan. I live in the county of Hawaii, on the island of Hawaii, in the state of Hawaii. I just spent the last few days camped out at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, watching Kilauea Volcano erupt, and I wanted to share some of the footage I shot with you. When I was a college student back in the mid-1970s, I took a geology class just for kicks. One morning, the professor burst in late and said, You guys have got to see this film. My friend in Hawaii just sent it to me. This stuff is happening right now. He loaded up the projector and showed us a film of a brand new eruption on Mauna Ulu in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. That film changed my life. I declared myself a geosciences major on the spot and even went on to earn a PhD in geochemistry. My love affair with volcanoes and my spiritual connection to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park has never waned. Visitors to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park right now are being treated to a rare event. Kilauea Volcano is erupting in two places simultaneously. Up in the summit caldera in Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater, a vent exploded open last March that has continued to thrill visitors with its billowing steam cloud and nighttime glow. If this were the only volcano you were ever going to see, it would be plenty spectacular. You can get current eruption activity updates from the National Park. Phone number is 808-985-6000. <laughs> but hold on. The real action is down at the coast where lava from the East Rift Zone has broken out of lava tubes, flows across the open ground and into the sea. Now from the air, you can see the spectacular glow of a small lava lake in the Pu'u'u'u crater and from several breakouts that are near the top of the Royal Garden subdivision. Lava is currently flowing down the Pali and entering the ocean at Waiku Panaha Ocean Entry where there are spectacular littoral explosions. Sorry, I'm talking geology again. A littoral explosion is simply a lava explosion along the beach. Although this activity, you know, is usually really vigorous, including 10 to 15 meter high lava fountains, it can be sporadic on a day-to-day -day basis. Over the years, lava has mostly entered the ocean within the national park boundaries. During those times, park policy has been to allow tourists to approach flowing lava as closely as the visitor himself thought was safe. <laughs> Surprisingly, a relatively small number of visitors were killed or maimed in this process, but unparalleled access to one of the great wonders of the world, the spectacle of the Earth remaking herself through volcanic eruption, was available on a very intimate basis to anyone who came to Hawaii. Every six years or so, just by chance, for a period of several months, the eruption flows go outside the park boundaries, and that's what it's doing now. The County of Hawaii, whose Civil Defense Department is responsible for visitor safety in these times, is not quite so liberal in granting access to the lava flow. The county maintains a viewing area several hundred meters back from the actual flow and ocean entry areas and visitors are not allowed to get any closer. As of this writing, to see the lava flow, one must find the County of Hawaii Volcano Viewing Area. From the Hawaii Belt Road at Ke'au, proceed south on Highway 130 through Pahoa and toward the now buried town of Kalapana. At the 20 mile marker, the road splits. The right branch, which is helpfully marked end of road, leads to a dirt and lava road that goes a couple of miles, at the end of which is the parking area for the County of Hawaii Volcano Viewing Area. You really cannot miss this during daylight hours because the enormous explosion plume is clearly visible from miles away. The viewing area is open from 2 in the afternoon until 10 at night, but no cars are allowed in after 8 p.m. Lava viewing and road information is available from the County of Hawaii at 808-961-8093. A carnival atmosphere hovers over the parking lot where several vendors hawk jewelry, t-shirt, drinks, and snacks, and there are porta potties available here too. The trail leading to the viewing area is largely flat but traverses a broken lava field. It is well marked with reflectors and reflective paint strips along the surface, and it's just a 15 or 20 minute stroll. The quality of viewing varies from week to week as the lava stream shifts nearer or farther from the viewing area. But seeing the orange glow of flowing lava and the fiery red explosions is one of the most amazing experiences a person can have no matter how far from the flow you are. It is hard to overstate the power, the mystery, and the magic of this eruption. But upon occasion, transient local atmospheric phenomena such as water spouts and lightning add even more spice to this already awe-inspiring spectacle. Other wonders abound here too. If you look closely, the hardened lava over which you are walking contains numerous casts of logs, trees, coconuts, and pandanus fruit. It's amazing. Lava viewing is best done at dusk and later. However, parking spaces quickly fill up on nice afternoons. Now, I usually plan to arrive at the parking area about hmm, 3.30 or 4 and walk into the viewing area, spending the hours until dark reading, having a picnic, and chatting with visitors who come from all over the world to see this wonder, and it's really an interesting thing. You should wear sturdy, closed-toed walking shoes and a hat to shed rain and sun. The lava surface is sharp, so I recommend long pants and long sleeve shirts, 
and a stout walking stick. Bring at least two liters of drinking water, snacks, and perhaps a couple of band-aids. Definitely bring sunblock. Because you are right on the ocean, a short rain squall should be expected. An umbrella and a raincoat or poncho is suggested, as well as protective covering for your photographic gear. If the wind shifts the explosion plume in your direction, discretion is definitely the better part of valor. You should evacuate immediately. Those fume clouds are toxic, containing various gaseous sulfur compounds, including sulfuric acid, as well as hydrochloric acid and fine particulate material. Now on the same topic, let me just mention that electronic and camera gear, as well as glasses, binoculars, and any other optics, will also be exposed to a certain amount of these toxic glasses, and you should wipe them down thoroughly after your trip. Most people plan to stay on after dark, so you should also bring a flashlight for each person in your group, and be sure you check for the batteries and bulb before you leave for your trip. Remember that food and gas are not always available after dark outside the immediate Hilo or Kailua Kona areas, so be sure you fill up your tank before you park, and be sure to bring plenty to eat and drink along with you. Viewing lava is one of the most amazing, wondrous, moving experiences you can have anywhere on Earth. People stand in awe, openly weeping at the sight of Mother Nature going through her rebirth. Each fiery explosion is met with a loud chorus of ooh oh, ah, and a display that will make every subsequent 4th of July fireworks spectacular seem pale by comparison. If you're coming to Hawaii, you should not miss this once-in-a-lifetime show, and if you've never considered Hawaii as a potential vacation, spot, you should think about it simply for this rare, unique, and entirely awe-inspiring, mystical, wondrous opportunity. I'm Donald B. McGowan. Thank you for spending a little time with me and my volcano. Aloha, ahui ho.